In today's video, we're going to talk about this. This is a direct conversion receiver for the 40 meter amateur radio band. And there's a bit of a story behind it. So let's get to it. Now I learned of this project through the Solder Smoke blog and audio podcast that focuses on homebrew radio. And the folks there at Solder Smoke designed this receiver in such a way that it can be built very easily in a modular way with easily obtainable components. And it was actually designed as a bit of a challenge, mainly for high school uh, hobbyist groups to build a receiver that actually works. Now their goal was to have maybe a dozen students build this receiver and call that a success. But the followers of the Solder Smoke blog and podcast uh, have kind of taken this project on and have built many of them. I think there's uh, close to 70 of them now uh, out around the world. Now most of the builders of this project are building it in a modular way where each component like the VCO, the mixer, the audio amplifier, etc. are built on separate boards. You know, kind of like you know this board right here which is just a simple diode ring mixer. This is certainly one component that's inside this receiver. And many of the builders have, have built each module individually so they can test them individually and then start putting them together to build the receiver up. And to be honest, I started doing that. I started off with the VCO here, figuring I'd, I'd build the VCO, then cut the board off, build some of the other pieces and put them together. And I wound up just starting to put it all together on one board and part of my brain wanted to make this thing small and compact, so I left it all on the one board. So uh, a little bit of a challenge when it comes to getting everything in here because it was all pretty tight. But uh, you can build this thing on separate boards and lay it all out on a piece of plywood or something like that and make it very easy to build. And I think you'll find if you do look at some of the videos that uh, Solder Smoke has posted that the majority of the builders have done just that. They've built individual boards, put them out on a piece of wood, and, uh, and made it uh, very easy to kind of uh, lay out, build, and troubleshoot. Now the block diagram of the receiver is pretty simple. The antenna input goes into a 40 meter bandpass filter designed really just to allow the 7 to 7.3 megahertz signals within the 40 meter amateur radio band to pass through and reject out of band signals that might overload the receiver such as broadcast AM and that type of thing. Signals coming out of that passive bandpass filter get presented into a mixer. It's a simple uh, four diode diode ring mixer. The local oscillator is provided by a variable frequency oscillator uh, that's tuned to essentially the frequency you want to measure, hence called a direct conversion receiver. We're just taking the input signal and converting it right down, immediately down to audio. The output of that mixer then goes into an audio diplexer, which forms two functions. It, it serves to terminate any of the RF output that's coming out of the mixer to prevent any uh, issues and nonlinearities. And there's also a low pass filter to only allow the audio signals to pass through to the final audio amplifier and then to there to drive the loudspeaker. In fact, the only gain in this entire receiver is all done in the audio amp. The mixer is passive, the diplexer is passive, the bandpass filter is passive, and the only other active circuit is the variable frequency oscillator. So let's take a brief look at the schematics. So here's the overall schematic. Antenna input here. Uh, here's our 40 meter bandpass filter. Uh, this is the uh, diode ring double balance mixer and the audio diplexer. The coal pits oscillator here is our variable frequency oscillator and this is our uh, three-stage uh, all-transistor audio amplifier. I'm not going to go into great analysis detail of each of these circuits. Many of these circuits I've actually done videos on. Uh, things like the diode ring mixer and the common emitter amplifier structures that are used in the audio amp I've got separate videos on. So I just want to kind of briefly kind of show you what's in these things so you can go ahead and build your own. Here's the VFO, the tuning part. Uh, it's basically just a coal pits oscillator. Uh, this inductor is actually built on a uh, 3D printed form uh, that uses a brass screw that goes in through the center of the coil to adjust, uh, basically adjust the uh, tank circuit here so that we get an output frequency that covers the full 40, mega, uh, 40 meter amateur radio band from 7 megahertz up to 7.3. But basically just a single NPN transistor uh, forming the oscillator and then a J310 JFET that's being used as a buffer to buffer that output to then drive into the mixer. The 4 meter bandpass filter just consists of a pair of uh, bifiler wound transformers just to do a little bit of impedance conversion into the filter core which is simply formed by essentially the, 
these uh, transformer uh, turns and this little capacitor network. Here's our diode ring double balance mixer. Uh, essentially it looks like a bridge rectifier but it's not. So if you've seen my video on the uh, diode ring mixer you'll, you'll see that. These are essentially arranged in a ring if you will. And then a pair of uh, uh, transformers uh, that are center tapped. And uh, our RF uh, comes in over here. Uh, goes into this pair of transformers, applies the, the signal to the diodes. And then we've got our local oscillator coming from the VFO coming into this uh, transformer here that commutates the diodes on and off, which effectively forms the switching action. And then the output of the mixer uh, comes here. And that output then goes into our audio diplexer, which provides an RF path to 50 ohms uh, for the RF signals so they get properly terminated. And then an LC low pass filter to uh, output the audio to go into the audio amplifier. The audio amplifier is quite simply three common emitter stages. Uh, we've got a biasing network that's equivalent on all three that sets up the bias to the n pan transistor uh, and then this sets up the collector current. Uh, it's bypassed uh, in the emitter so that we get the maximum gain out of each stage and then we're, we AC couple into the next stage. After this first AC coupling, we're going into a potentiometer that is used to adjust the volume. Uh, the signal level effectively going into the second stage. That second stage then couples into the last stage. And the load of the last stage is actually an audio output transformer. So basically a 1,000 ohm primary, 8 ohm secondary to drive an 8 ohm speaker. So here's the layout for mine. Uh, so th this guy here is the 3D printed form for the main tuning inductor. Again, it's got a, a brass screw that goes in or out to adjust the inductance, which therefore adjusts the uh, output frequency of this oscillator. Now you'll notice I've got a lot of silver mica capacitors in here. The silver micas are really very stable, and that's really kind of key to making yourself an oscillator that doesn't drift too much. And also paralleling multiple values to get the value you want also it helps with stability. So the main oscillator is this transistor here, biasing network, and then the LC associated with those components. There's a local uh, di uh, Zener diode used here as a shunt regulator to give a nice stable uh, supply to the oscillator core. And then that's coupled into a JFET uh, buffer, which then drives uh, through this capacitor into the diode ring mixer, which is right here. Now, over here is my antenna input. Uh, this, these two uh, transformers and this network of capacitors is the 40 meter bandpass filter. So that's feeding into the other end of the mixer. The output of the mixer then couples up this way. The audio diplexer is right in here. We see the, there's that 100 microhenry uh, RF choke. There's the, uh, the RF terminations and then we're AC coupling into the audio amplifier stage. Uh, one, first transistor is right back here. Here's my volume control pot. The second two transistor stages are here, audio output transformer, and going into the speaker. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going into the details of how I laid this out and how I built it because I really want you to take on the challenge to build one yourself. And again, it may make more sense to build each component up on individual boards like this. In the notes down below this video on the YouTube channel, uh, I'll provide links to the Solder Smoke podcast uh, that talks about this, there's also a link to the, a Hackaday webpage that, that talks about this project that appeared on Hackaday as well, uh, as well as various links um, to other information that you might need to go build one of these yourself. And I encourage you to go do that. This was a really fun project to build and to have a receiver that you can hook up to antenna and actually hear signals and only uses five transistors is pretty cool. Now one question that might come up is, well, how do you tell what frequency you're tuning to if you don't have your, all your test equipment around by you? And the answer is, well, that can be tricky. <laughs> okay, But uh, because it is a direct conversion receiver, the oscillation frequency of the VFO is the frequency you're effectively tuned to. So, And because it's a relatively high level injection into the mixer, uh, there's enough energy to be able to be picked up by an external receiver or even something like this little tiny SA. So with the tiny SA, I can see my marker is sitting at, uh, in this case, 7.214 megahertz. So that's basically where I'm effectively tuned. And if I adjust my uh, tuning capacitor here, or tuning inductor here, I can actually see the VCO frequency changing. So now at about 7.122 megahertz. 
So you may have to you know, devise your own way to kind of figure out where your receiver is tuned uh, based on where the local oscillator or the VFO is tuned to. But an inexpensive tiny SA, uh, a receiver that has a spectrum scope or something like that, uh, or even an oscilloscope kind of hooked into the JFET uh, buffer uh, and making a measurement that way is another way to go. So, uh, so you don't really have a direct frequency readout it's just something you'll have to kind of figure out and devise a way yourself. Again, all part of the challenge. I'm going to close out this video with just a couple of sample recordings that I made with this receiver up in my ham shack last night. I was going to do some more recordings this morning, but we were hit with a solar flare and the band conditions are horrible. <laughs> so we'll have to use uh, some of the recordings that I did last night. So there's no audio commentary other than you're just listening to some CW and some single sideband signals on the receiver and then the video will end. I hope you take on this project. It's really a lot of fun and uh, be sure to let me know in the comment section if you actually go ahead and do it. And thanks again as always for watching and uh, stay tuned for a couple of the recordings made with this receiver.